It was supposed to rain today, but oh my God, look at this day. It's beautiful. So, one of the best things that I learned really early on with horsemanship is that you can teach horses almost anything that you want to teach them. And for me, it started when somebody, um, one of my teachers taught me to make the wrong thing difficult and the right thing easy. Early on, like that was really liberating in a sense that all of a sudden, instead of just having exercises that somebody teaches me, all of a sudden I was freed from that kind of constraint and I was able to apply this, this broader philosophy to almost anything. I could take my horse and if I wanted to teach him how to bow or how to um, stand for the mounting block or, or something totally unique that I had a philosophy with which I could teach them. And, hi buddy, as much as that make the wrong thing difficult and the right thing easy philosophy is good, what I found is that uh, it's, there's something that's not quite right there, that's not the whole picture. And so even though good horsemanship, good horsemanship does make the wrong thing difficult and the right thing easy, there's a component beyond that that's, that's even better. One thing that I've always felt good at is identifying and looking at somebody and seeing, oh, that's really good horsemanship and that's not such great horsemanship. And I've always felt like that's come somewhat natural to me to, to identify what good horsemanship is and what not good horsemanship is. Now, actually executing it and doing it, that's been really hard and, and takes a lot of work. But actually identifying it and saying, oh, that looks like pretty good horsemanship to me, that's been relatively easy. Now, some people um, have kind of brutalized that make the wrong thing difficult and the right thing easy philosophy. And so that's when I started to question, maybe there's something beyond that philosophy that I can use to teach people and help people understand how to teach horses better. So one of the other things that people have talked to me about is set it up and let them find it. And I think that's really, really super um, and a super thing to think about. If you're a really good horseman, you set a problem up and when the horse finds the right answer, hey buddy, when the horse finds the right answer, you take the pressure off. And then they learn from themselves making those choices, they learn the right answers. And I think that philosophy is a step better than just make the wrong thing difficult and the right thing easy. Um, but there's still one more step beyond that. And, and to me, I think that is make your horse feel like a winner. So if I can explain to my horse and ask the right question at the right time that I can generate the, the correct response, then it's on me to ask the question, right? It's on me to create a question that I know I can get the right response from him. And when horsemen get to that level and they know they work basic first, they get basic questions and basic answers and they get those working for them and then they start getting into the more difficult stuff. That's where I see really, really brilliant horsemen working. Making their horses feel like a winner and like everything they ask them to do, they feel like they can give the right response. Oh my God, he's so cute. You're so cute. So let me show you a little bit of that philosophy just with teaching him to stand for me to get on. I don't need a saddle, I don't need a bridle. It's just teaching him to come up alongside there and stand for me as I'm getting ready to get on. So if he comes up here and the natural thing is for them to move away, like just like that, right? But so I'll, I'll just ask him, I could make this really difficult and work him really hard and then when he stands here, take the pressure off. But really there's a step better and that is giving an aid 
and getting a response. There, that's the right response. That's the right response. And then as he shapes up and gives me the answer that I want, then I can release him. This is, this is close. This shape is what I'm looking for. A step in the right direction. Then if he steps out over there again, no problem. I'll just direct him back here, direct him back here, get him shaped up. I don't need to make that out there impossible. I don't even need to make it that hard for him. I just need to reshape it a little bit. This is the place I want him. In close to me here. Then I'll pick up my rein again. Oh, he swings out there, no big deal. Bump a little bit, send him around, send him around. There, here we go, straighten up. And there the pressure comes off. Oh, and there he goes out again, no worries. I'll just keep moving him. I don't have to make it really that difficult. Just that he learns that that's not exactly the answer I want. Then I'll pull, asking little questions. Can you come forward? That's the right answer. Can you come forward? There, that's the right answer. This is the shape that I want. That he starts learning from here that he can come up alongside me. Good. If he steps out there, no problem. Just ask him again to come around. I won't let him linger there for too long. I'll just reshape him, say not there, not there. Not there, here. Not there, not there. It's, it's, it takes some time. Not there, here. This shape is right. Just rewarding, rewarding the slightest try. Not there, that's okay. This is totally okay. Bump him a little bit. He doesn't quite understand, but he'll get it here in a second. Bumping, I might take him back over here a moment. Here, like this. Shape up like this, good, come close. Here, like this. There we go. We'll see if he licks his lips there. When the pressure comes off, there he licks his lips. I don't know if you guys can see, but that, that's kind of a, a sign that he has a little problem here, a little pressure. Set it up and let him find it. This area here is where I want the pressure to come off. Then I'll ask again. So he's too far back here. I need him a little bit more forward. Ask him one step forward, good. It's okay, there he swung out a little bit. No problem, I'll just send him around again. Don't have to be brutal about it. Good, like that there, good. This is better, now he's more forward. I could get on him from here if I had a saddle. Or just if I wanted to lean like this, good boy. There he licks his lips again, you guys see? Always watching those little moments where they think, oh, this is the good place to be. That's right, buddy. That's the place you wanna be. But early, early in my career, I, I used this same philosophy, but I'd be really firm here, like really almost in a hurry. And you don't need it. You don't need to be brutal. You just need to set it up and let them find the right answer. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, he doesn't make it? Okay, send him around again. Send him around again. Send him around again. Keep going. Just don't let him stop over there. You just keep working at it. There we go. This is where we want him. We'll see if he licks his lips again. You probably can't see this time. Not grazing. Yeah, 
There he licks his lips. Not grazing. Good boy. Good boy. All right, he's a little bit not as close as I want him if I want to be really picky. But that's a try, for sure a try in the right direction. So I just think about that. How clear can I be to set it up and let them find it, but also to, in, in the process, in the process of teaching a bigger thing, like how to teach them to stand at the mounting block, I'm asking little questions and getting responses to the aids. So can you move over here? Can you move over here? And those questions to the little aids um, those matter too. So working to refine that. Can you, as I lead him over here, does he answer those little questions well? Then the bigger picture falls into place. Okay, I'll ask him, can he come a little more closer? A little closer, one more step. Oh, and he turns around, no big deal. Don't let him stop. Don't let him stop. Bump him a little bit here, there. Just till he shapes up here. That's the right answer there. Good boy. And he starts finding that more and more. This is the place to be. That's the right answer. This is where we want it to be. But just take your time with this, that they, they know over time that this is a really good place to be. Good boy. All right, now I'll get down and just start again. So eventually, over time, I can explain to the horse what I want that way. It doesn't have to be brutal. It doesn't have to be beating him over here while he's away from the mounting block and then taking the pressure away. Even though they'll learn that, that system, they may learn to stand by the mounting block, there's, it's not good enough for me. It's not high enough quality. You can be very soft and still teach the horse. And that's kind of my end goal for everything. Being really soft and being as fair and as clear a horseman as I can be. That's, that's kind of my holy grail. All right, I'll try it once more. I'll come at it from here and see more and more if I can get him to where he'll search to put his body there. That, that next step, like what I want, what's kind of cool to show people, is if I come at it and step up there, that he positions his own body like that. And it just takes a matter of time. If you spend an hour doing this on the first day, the, the next day it'll take you 20 minutes, and the third day, if you do it right, they'll, they'll move over there in the first, first time you step up there. So it's just a matter of taking the time to get it right at the beginning, um, and then you can have that with you, and you may have to adjust it every once in a while in the training, but it, it starts to happen easier and easier. Let's take a look again. Okay, so I'll step up here, and I won't give him a long time. If I step up here, I want him to start thinking, move your feet, move your feet, move your feet, move your feet here like this, good. That's searching the right way. Around over here. Find your spot, good, like that, good. Then looking if he licks his lips again. You guys can't see, maybe I should put the camera over there. Really good there, getting better. There he licks his lips. You guys are gonna have to trust me on that one. Let me move the camera over there, then you can see better. It's, this is really cool. If you get it working for you and you show your friends, they'll be like, oh my God, he got up on the mounting block and the horse moved over. But really, you're just teaching the horse a very basic thing. Okay, so getting up here again. Getting up, saying search. There he goes, there he goes. Keep going, search. Add a little pluck. There he goes. 
there right here that's perfect good so you can see I use a little bit of cluck to say keep keep searching that that eventually becomes my pressure so I can use that there he licks his lips so he says oh this is a good spot to be really good boy let me try let me try once more see how little I can do I never I don't want to brutalize it all right I'll try again get up here good here he goes here he goes can you make it can you make it good Good, there he licks his lips. <laughs> Started licking his lips early almost. Perfect. Good boy. So for me, that's, that's the first time I've really worked on it. He's new. Um, he's the new horse that I just got in designer. And he's a five-year-old, Destano. Um, I'm really excited about him and he's super sweet. Um, as you can tell super sensitive too so it's really fun to work with them when they're like that and they're searching for the right answers and fun to be around <laughs> all right I gotta go we'll see you guys in the next video subscribe if you haven't subscribed and you like these videos I have fun making them so if you don't subscribe I'll still be making them We'll see you guys later.